Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles. Welcome to my channel. I'm still in Chile. This is my parents' backyard again and I am filming on the same day I filmed the other video of the basic cami that I drafted for myself from my bodice block. So now I have a second, like a part two, where I add um, a few different things, just a few different modifications and that gives me a bit of a different look for the same basic cami that's gonna fit me the same you know I like playing around so um, you're gonna notice I've used this fabric before of course <laughs> you're gonna see that as the process uh, video shows you the fabric I'm using you might recognize it what I've done with this cami is um, I've drafted an extension to uh, the center front to add like a button placket to the cami so that it has buttons down the center front um, initially I was planning to do buttonholes and all that stuff um, it turns out I didn't finish the project while I was in Brazil all I had left were the buttonholes and the buttons <laughs> and I brought it to my mum's and it turns out that my mum's sewing machine this summer is not making very nice buttonholes it was fine last summer I did make some but it's those you know those uh, older machines that have like the three-step buttonhole where you have to like yeah well it's not doing them very nicely so i thought you know what i'm just gonna sew the buttons onto the, the placket and it's gonna be for show it doesn't matter <laughs> it still looks like you know what i wanted um maybe when i get back home in brazil i'll unstitch those buttons and actually make the button holes but anyway that's beside the point <laughs> what's important is that i showed you how i am um, calculated how to divide here the middle how much to add how to fold it um, what to interface you know I, I show you all those steps and um, how to do a bit of a different neckline so I'll leave you with that and I'll be back to show you the cami I'm drafting the extension I'm going to add to the center front so I can have buttons on the front. I'm drafting the extension I'm going to add to the center front so I can have buttons on the front. Now I will do the, the center bands and interface and buttonholes and buttons and everything but it still won't be functional because I'm going to close it up on the top with a facing. So it's just going to be for show. Anyway, you can see the yellow paper there, um, that marks the fold there if I was doing a traditional cami, but we will ignore that fold there and this is going to be the center. So on the center is where you usually have your buttons, right? So let's do little tiny marks. Like these are, I'm, I'm just drawing buttons randomly so you know that that's where they go. Um, I haven't measured anything but that's where the buttons go. So let's say I'm gonna use a medium sized button. Um, I'm gonna leave an overlap of a centimeter there. So I'm just gonna put a line there. And then I want to add on five centimeters. So that's the line that you see over here. Five centimeters and that's two inches. So I'm gonna do another line here. So I have an inch there, an inch there, and then a centimeter there. So that makes this band six centimeters, the, the width of it. And the length is just the length of the cami. So I'm just gonna draw some lines here so I can finish up marking the length here. So you see a lot of lines here, but it's not that confusing. Basically, this strip there that's an inch, I'm gonna cut a long strip of interfacing and all this area, just this bit is gonna be interfaced. So I'm gonna interface that and then overlock the edge. Then I'm gonna fold that on that fold line, fold it twice, and then this will be my new center that one there that's the edge of my front but it's actually going to overlap with the buttons like this you know what I mean I'll show you more when I sew it I have my two front pattern pieces for my cami um, I have done the first step and if you remember when I showed you the band there was going to be an inch there that was going to be interfaced so I cut my strip of interfacing there and I have already fused that onto that first inch now then you fold that in another inch 
and then you fold it again and then that makes up the six centimeters so basically this is five centimeters there and then you had an extra centimeter there and that was the center of the kami so when you fold it like that it's going to create the band and i'm going to do a row of stitching there to secure that there's going to be uh, one, two, three layers of the fabric plus the interfacing and that's enough, uh, I believe, to put buttonholes in there and buttons. Now, this is going to be overlapping a centimeter there and that's how it's going to be. So the middle of the cami is a centimeter in from this fold, so a centimeter there. And when I match them there, I'm going to put buttonholes there, a centimeter away from the edge. Buttonholes, buttonholes. And then on the other side, we'll have that overlapping little band. Um, now, the top piece there, I'm going to finish in another way. This won't be functional. I mean, the buttons will be, but at the top, it will be fully closed. These are the two front pieces of the cami. I've sewn the bust starts there on the side. I've finished the bands there. I have sewn that down with um, a stitch right on the border there. Both, I've overlapped them and I've done a stay stitch there on the neckline, uniting that there so that's not gonna go anywhere. Now I was thinking, how am I gonna finish this front? And I'm gonna flip this around to show you up close. Okay, here you can see the front neckline there. That's the band that goes down where I'm gonna put buttonholes and buttons. And now there's this little like uh, square area. And in my normal cami, this is where I'd put the, the facing and have the straps coming out of here. But in this case, what I did was use a tiny piece of bias binding I made out of the same fabric. And I sort of closed down that area. Same on the other side, that little square. So I'm going to finish the neckline there with another, with you know, just store-bought bias binding because I don't have enough. So this neckline is going to be finished really neatly there. And that's going to look sort of square there. Like that. Um, I'm going to do the same with the back. Let me show you. Okay, here's the back piece. Um, the the neckline on the back is not like the front it doesn't have that bit there it's sort of more straight and then down you know like the arm side so i'm going to finish that neckline with the store-bought bias binding as well finish off that seam there and then i'm going to stitch these two together once i'm done with that tiny piece of neckline there i'm going to have raw the raw arm side there on the side and um that is where I'm going to attach my bias binding. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting my bias tape there to finish that arm side. And then I'm going to have my strap. So my strap is 31 centimeters. So I'm going to measure from that little bit there up 31. And then I'm going to continue binding the arm side of the back. And that's going to enclose all that raw area. And then I'm going to finish it off on the side seam. And I'm going to do that on both sides. This is my basic blue cami that you've already seen. Very basic. This is how I finalize the length of the strap. All the feet around there. Everything's like I want it to be. So um, on my red one that I'm making, this arm side area is raw and I have no strap. So with the bias binding, I want to make one continuous. I'm going to start on one of these side seams and then have this, the same bias tape be the strap and then close the other side of the arm side and finish again on the side seam. So I need to measure all around how much that is. I've already measured with my tape measure from side seam to side seam and it's 58 centimeters. And I need to add a centimeter here and there for seam allowance because it's gonna be tucked in there. So I'm gonna have two strips of this spice binding that are 60 centimeters, one for each side. I have attached on my bias binding. I have pressed it down there on the neckline front and back. I have sewn on the side seams of the cami, but here on the top, I've left a piece unstitched. 
same on both sides okay so this is the right side view of the cami this is the front this is a little thingy that i'm gonna close up with buttons so my side seams are open there for a little bit and this is where i'm gonna start the binding binding there reach up to that little bit catch that raw continue up with my strap continue there on the back arm side and then finish on the side seam I already know the length of my straps need to be 60 centimeters so I'm gonna do that now everything's pinned and I've still got some open side seam under there but the binding goes from there up and then catches that side catches the raw arm side and then finishes again on the side seam um, so I'm happy with it I have to actually sew it now <laughs> But what about this thing? You must think I'm crazy, this little square. Well, I have some bias tape that I'm gonna chop in half. And actually, I'm gonna have a second one come out from there. But this one will be just attached behind it. So it'll be like that, and this one will go up uh, like that and it'll attach there. Like you're gonna be seeing part of the bra strap, but I don't really mind. I have another bra that has like a thinner strap than this one, but I think it'll be a nice uh, little detail for this cami. I'm back now I don't know if you can hear some music in the background I'm um, some of my parents neighbors way back there like having a party or something and I can hear like the bass like doom 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 so if you can hear I apologize I cannot control that <laughs> okay so my cami I love it it's the same as my little red dress that I made for the little red dress project I'll pop a picture here in case you have not seen that but yeah I had a meter and a half of that fabric. I used about 90 centimeters to make that dress and about 60 centimeters to make this cami. Now, if you hear me saying I didn't have enough to make enough bias tape, it's because I didn't have enough to make all the bias tape I would have wanted. And that's why I finished the insides of the neckline with my just satin bias tape that is store bought, you know? And then these uh, visible straps there, um, I did with the one that I made. So this second one that goes from here to there, the second little strap, I sewed on by hand just in there. It's just sewn on by hand, folded it in. It's nice and neat. It's very um, reinforced hand sewing. Um, in another world, if I would have had a more bias tape, I would have done a complete different finish to the neckline, but I worked with what I had. So. Yeah, I really like it. The, the buttons you can see there, I put these little buttons that are red and black. I think there's six or seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I like putting loads of buttons down the front whenever I make anything. If a pattern calls for like six buttons, I'll put, I'll put eight. If it calls for eight, I'll put ten, you know. <laughs> Having a larger bust, I'm always thinking I'm going to explode out of the buttons and I just feel unsafe even if it's a well-fitting garment so yeah i put a lot of buttons here and all the rest is the same same darts in the side there for the bust at the back for shaping it's viscose it's very flowy very light it's a very nice cami and i like it a lot so yeah um i will insert now a little clip of me wearing it and then i'll be back okay so here is the red one um, you can see the double straps there. Um, you can see the, the bra, the, like the black one under there, but because it's sort of in between the other ones, I don't, I don't mind that much that, you know. Um, the back, that's how it looks there. So the shaping is basically the same as the navy blue one I showed in the other vlog, only because this fabric is more drapey and thin, I think it flows nicer than the other one. Um, but it's really nice and here's the buttons you can see just for show actually non-functional and I can just pull this on and off normal because 
the neckline is closed you know behind there with just one strip of bias binding so this is not functional you know so I'm super happy with it super happy with the fit just like I want it to be happy <laughs> I really liked modifying this cami. Um, this is not the last. I mean, I have my basic cami now. Um, I have so many options. I have so many things, so many ideas I can do with it. And yeah, um, I'm not done showing you some camis. They'll be popping up every now and then when I make a new one. So I hope you enjoyed watching this and seeing how um, how it's not that hard to make modifications and to create a really uh, different look with a really simple camisole pattern. I'm super happy I took the time to draft mine and go through all the process. You know what I've done if you've watched the other vlog of the navy blue cami. If you haven't, um, I'll put a picture here and I'll link it down below to, you know, how I did that. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and I'll see you soon. Bye!